Recycling is hard. We all know that. But what if there was a smart trash can that could take care of that process for you? Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Builder Nation. For today's interview, we have Tanner Cook, co-founder and CTO at Clean Robotics. The startup creating a zero waste tomorrow, one item at a time. So welcome, Tanner. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm the CTO and co-founder at Clean Robotics. A bit of an interesting background. I was previously a nuclear engineer and then I had my own startup in nanotech. I ended up selling before joining in and helping to start Clean Robotics seven years ago now. So been at this for a while. What would you say were the main challenges while funding the company? I'd say that while funding the company or just getting off the ground in general, it's that waste and recycling isn't a sexy space nearly as much. So the amount of, of money and investment that goes there is not as substantial as the newest shiny consumer product. Even though it is incredibly important, one throws things away. Everyone has their garbage and recycling compostables taken somewhere. It is a very integral and important part of society, but it's not as sexy. It's a little bit difficult for people to understand the value of investment into new and emerging technologies within waste and recycling. And especially, I mean, six years ago, I think the industry has changed a lot. So I know that you guys just, just created a new feature for the product. So could you talk first about your product and about the future? Our core product at Clean Robotics is called TrashBot. So it's a smart trash can. It replaces conventional bins in high traffic public places. Think replacing trash cans at airports, convention centers, places that have a large kind of transient population of people. What it fundamentally does is it separates uh, all the items that you throw away. So if you throw away a plastic water bottle, it'll automatically separated into recycling. The trash bot itself knows all the local rules. It doesn't have to, to figure anything out. It just does it for you. And on top of that, it, it provides education and feedback. So one of our newest features that we have is interactive feedback. So where you throw away a plastic water bottle and the trash bot will tell you some information about it. Maybe it'll tell you that the average American uses 110 plastic bottles per year. Maybe it'll tell you that emptying your plastic water bottle makes it far more recyclable. So we're really proud of what we're able to do, not only by increasing the quantity and quality of recycled goods, but in educating the general public too about recycling and what they can do to be better at home. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I was looking through the website and I noticed that and I was like, oh, this is truly interesting. And this got implemented in February, if I'm correct. Yeah, it's definitely a newer feature. And what's great about it is everyone can relate to waste and recycling too. Everyone wants to get better at it, but it's kind of hard to figure it out when you're looking at a little piece of paper that maybe has some graphics on it and oftentimes wrong information. But being able to show you instantly actionable and very targeted feedback on what you're throwing away is what people really want and what they really need when it comes to recycling education. 100% agree. So our main customers are kind of airports, large businesses, campuses, schools, sports arenas, places where there's a large population of people moving through quickly is generally where we tend to do the best. And just thinking about the beginning of the company, was it hard in order to find a product market fit? What's interesting is I think it was always there. People have always been wanting to be better at kind of waste and recycling aspect. It's more that since we're such an innovative product, it's convincing them that mm -hmm. is the right solution. And oftentimes our earliest customers, we were their last, their last, we don't have anything else. You're in, we've tried everything else. So we were just kind of the, their last option in a lot of ways. And then once our customers started talking and realizing that we were actually a good solution, it solidified that product market fit more, right? We understood that people wanted this and that recycling and poor recycling habits were causing a lot of issues, but proving that your product works is kind of a different issue, right? Yeah, totally. Whenever I talk to founders or CEOs or CTOs in the industry, most of them tell me that the hardest part or one of the hardest parts is actually the transition between the prototype and then the actual product. So how was that like for you? It's difficult, right? You're building something that no one's built before. You're trying to build hundreds to thousands of them and not have them break all the time. 
the transition of going from building these in my garage to having a contract manufacturer make a lot of them, no small feat, particularly where you're blending like we are aspects of advanced AI, electronics, robotics, and hardware all into one system and making sure that it works. It is exceptionally hard to do and time consuming. Yeah. People say that hard, hardware is hard. So hardware yeah, is hard. Totally. Yeah. The, the Whenever I have these interviews, I think that it's really interesting because most of the founders are engineers. So I know that you're a mechanical engineer, correct me if I'm wrong. That is so correct. So I, I wanted to ask, how close are you with the engineering team, with the operations team? Well, it's consistent, right? Part of being a founder is still getting my hands dirty and doing the jobs that others don't have the time to do sometimes or don't necessarily have the background to do. So I go and I get my hands dirty. I do parts ordering. I do some prototyping sometime, not as much as I'd like to, particularly, but it's I'm definitely very close with the engineering team. And we have a very kind of targeted tighter team of engineers, a couple of extremely smart people. And then we part things out to contractors and consultants as needed. So it's worked dynamically and very well for us. How was the pandemic like? How did you guys pass through that? And did you have any supply chain issues or procurement issues? What was nice is we're small enough and close enough to our product still that we were able to design around a lot of the issues that kind of arose from the pandemic. We did shift our supply chain from seas to the United States, which was kind of a large move, but we were kind of able to design our way around a lot of the chip shortages and the like, some of the actual physical hardware, the metals and stuff like that. The uh, times for production definitely extended, but didn't impact us super readily. But overall, it was actually uh, kind of interesting. It was, it had positive impacts on our business as well. It was a lot easier to get in touch with some of the people that we sell to when they were all working from home rather than frantically running around and trying to run an airport or a convention center on site where they're never in their office checking their emails. So it's kind of an interesting opportunity there, being able to kind of expand our sales and get in touch with people and talk a lot more with our customers and potential customers was kind of an unseen benefit of a lot of that too. Really interesting because most of the hardware companies, they all complain about supply chain and how hard it was. It sounds like you guys somehow managed to do it, changing from overseas to the States. So, wow. Yeah. And again, it just happened to coincide a little bit with some other factors that played along nicely and we were able to plan accordingly. I think we adjusted pretty well to it. And also being like an essential service around it, right? Like waste and all of that is top priority. You'd be surprised how quickly things grind to a halt when your trash doesn't picked up for several weeks. Right? So I would like to ask you about the next steps for the company. Are you guys planning on expanding or I don't know, releasing any new features? Right. I think our, our goals right now are fundraising more. We're working on that and expanding more. And we do have some products that I unfortunately can't tell you about yet in our pipeline that I'm very excited about, whether it's through data management, optimization, or new smaller, cool waste related products or facilities management projects. We're working on quite a lot and we are definitely growing quickly. We'll make sure to stay tuned for the new features and for the new products and all of that. So absolutely. And I think everyone's going to love to see them as they roll out in our trash bots across the country and across the world too here, hopefully. Across the world. Yeah, that will be great. I mean, seeing the robotic going international. That's going to be interesting. I think so. I'm excited for it, but there's of course roadblocks in the way and plenty of hurdles with getting new products into international markets. Okay. And from your perspective, where do you think, I mean, talking about the, the industry, where do you think the future of the robotics industry is going? Ooh, of the robotics industry, robotics and AI in particular have an interesting opportunity to improve our ability to do dirty, dull, and dangerous tasks so much to the point that I hope it frees up a lot of people's time to do other things. Whereas it may be as simple as saving someone's three seconds of figuring out where they're supposed to throw their trash to more complex and again, dirty jobs yeah. that we're seeing people figure out solutions to all the time. It's definitely going to grow and where it's going to go is going to be helpful, I hope. And Last but not least, Tanner, do you have any advice to future 
entrepreneurs starting on this path? Ooh, my main advice would be to pivot dynamically and stick with it. The successful people within entrepreneurship are not the ones who have the best idea right off the bat. It's the ones who stick with it and tailor and improve upon their product and listen to feedback and stick around whether it's difficult or not. That would be my advice. It's not for everyone. And I think that's also another part is recognizing that it is not for everyone. Definitely. Being humble enough and be being persistent. I think that's a key as well. That really helps. Yeah, the persistence and perseverance with it is you hear about it, but then you go through it and you're like, okay, I can't. I can't. <laughs> you're a great example of that. I mean, six years after starting the company, that's a big sum. So thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. for being here, for sharing your experiences. Do you have any social media handles where can people find you or the company? Yeah, definitely. Look us up on Instagram at Clean Robotics and online at www.cleanrobotics.com or just Google Trashbot. That's an easy one to remember. Be sure to take pictures of Trashbots when you see them out in the wild and definitely go ahead and use them. We love it when people use our products. Amazing. Thank you so much. And remember, guys, that you can also find more information, interesting articles, interesting interviews, just like this one with Tanner, direct on our website, control.com slash realer-nation. We would love to hear from you. And once again, Tanner, thank you so much for being here, for taking the time, and for joining Wilder Nation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me.